Hey guys, it's Erica here with Tiny Acorn. Welcome back to my channel. You guys, I'm really excited about today's video because this has been such a long time coming. I recorded the beginning of this DIY project last year, I think around November or something. I had found a quilt at the thrift store. I had been wanting to make a quilted jacket for a while and I had this pattern that I had been sitting on for a year that I hadn't made anything with. So I thought it would be a great DIY to take this quilt from the thrift store and transform it into a quilted jacket. I love how it turned out and I'm gonna show you how I did everything today. So make sure to stay tuned. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Please. Thank you Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Make sure to stay tuned to the end to hear about my new blog. Look at this precious thing. So cute. Good girl. So I wanted to show you guys my outfit of the day just because I love it so much. So I am wearing this. Wow, your little nails are so loud. Kick it and clack it on the ground. Thank you. So, Margot, sit. Good girl. I got this little jumpsuit that's actually gifted from this company called Alex Mill. They have a lot of really cute staple wardrobe items. Love that it has pockets, tie at the waist, and it's just adorable. And it fits me while I'm pregnant. And then I rolled up the bottoms just a little bit, and then I paired it with my new Everlane clogs. You guys, I don't know if you've seen these clogs yet, but they're the cutest little wooden clogs. I love the woven texture, and then they also have um, other colors as well. I'll link those for you guys. And then I paired it with my hat because I love a good hat with an outfit. I feel like the hat just kind of completes the look. Let me know what you guys think. Okay, so let's get this DIY underway. Okay, so for this DIY, the most important thing is your vintage quilt and the pattern that you pick. Pick a pattern, you can use this one, I will link it for you. It's so easy, but pick a pattern that is going to be easy for you to do. Also, sewing machine is definitely critical when you're sewing so much and you're sewing the thick um, quilt. It's just gonna take way too long to do it by hand, so I definitely recommend a sewing machine. Also, twill tape is going to come in handy so that you can finish the edges. You're gonna need scissors, and lastly, pins. And then, if you want to dye the fabric, then you're going to need to get some dye as well. Okay, so here's my quilt, and it's actually really small. It's only like about two yards worth of fabric. This is the pattern I'm using, and it's actually like really easy. The only thing is they have outer fabric and the lining fabric. And since my quilt it has a lining, I'm not going to be cutting out a lining. Okay, I just cut out the back pattern. Okay, so this back piece is done. Now I gotta just cut out the rest. So I just cut out the front two panels here. And on this one, I was smart enough to use the side seam that's already on the quilt as the bottom so I don't have to worry about finishing this. Whereas on the back piece, I did not do that. So now I have to figure out how I'm gonna finish this edge. I might use some sort of tape or something that you put around the bottom. I might do that in white. And then I see that this is probably the reason why this quilt was donated, that there's this big black spot on there. But since I am planning on putting a pocket there, it should be okay. So now I have to cut two sleeves here. I am gonna use this edge that's already finished for me um, at the bottom of the sleeve near the cuffs. So I won't have to worry about finishing that edge. So I'm gonna do two of these and then the pockets here 
and the trim for the collar. So this is all of the quilt that I have left and I am amazed that I was able to make it work. Here's all of my pattern pieces here and I'm gonna start pinning them together. So I have some of the pieces pinned together and I'm gonna just start sewing now. I feel like for the most part, I really like how it looks. Um, and I just really like this pattern a lot. Like I said, I need to figure out a way to finish the inside seams. And I think I'll have to purchase some sort of like finishing tape or something like that to cover this. Um, I also need to put the pockets on and I'm going to dye this jacket. And I'm not sure exactly what color I wanna dye it yet. Um, I was thinking about tea dyeing it so this is the inside of the coat, and now I have these raw edges that I need to finish. So I bought some white 100% cotton twill tape. So I'm just going to be putting it on here like so, and wrapping it around there like that. So once this is on here, it's going to look something like this. And I did it on the bottom, where I had a little bit of a raw edge down there. And I'm also going to need to do it on the pockets. All right, so this is where I left off with this jacket. I actually cuffed the sleeve because I like how that looks. And now I'm wearing it with this outfit. I'm unsure if I want to dye it or not. I was just gonna dye it right now. Ah, I'm so torn. I don't know if I should dye it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I have a bunch of extra scrap fabric. So I'm going to do a couple test dyes and see if I like it, and then I'll go from there. So here's all of my dye right here. These are the colors that I like the best, I think, for this. I kind of actually wanted to do like a, a mustard yellow for the jacket, but I don't know if that's gonna work out. So then I also thought maybe I could add in this wine color, just a little bit of that, it, and do these together, and maybe then it would turn mustard. Um, I was gonna tea dye it, but I don't know if I wanna mess with that right now. I think I might just stick to the regular dyes. <laughs> it's only been in here for like five minutes and I'm gonna say I don't like the color. And I would be really sad if my whole entire coat ended up looking like this. I'm gonna try adding the red color, just like a hint of red. Maybe I should just do tea dyeing because I don't think I like any of these colors. Okay, so here's what I started with. This is what it ended up looking like after probably 10 minutes with the sherbet color and the wine color. This yellow is actually an acrylic. So it's really not gonna dye very well, but the cotton did. I would feel probably like an Easter egg wearing this coat in that color. So I'm gonna try the tea dyeing thing now. Okay, so I am going to look up how to tea dye because I just don't like the colors. Ew. I know, <laughs> you just said ew. <laughs> yeah, it was gross. Jason looked at it and he said ew. Yeah, it's gross looking. It is gross looking, huh? Yeah. So I'm gonna look up how to tea dye. Ah, here we go. YouTube video guys, YouTube video. It never fails. This girl, Tasha Leland, she's awesome. So I think we're gonna try this. I think I'm gonna actually get two boxes. This is about a 32 liter pot. Just putting a bunch of tea bags okay, in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start to take out the tea bags. 
Okay. And damp. So I'm just gonna soak. Just getting it wet. And she's in. Three hours. She soaked it. I'm gonna let this guy uh, dry overnight, and I'm gonna check it out. I have done it. Finally, new dress. Oh, that's pretty. Need a little spanks action, but it's fine. Very Aww. happy with this. So I ended up putting my dress in the tea for three hours. I kept checking it at every 30 minute interval and it just wasn't enough. Okay, I just finished watching Tasha's video. I'm gonna link it for you guys in case you're interested. I'm just gonna start brewing a bunch of tea now. I am going to use some loose leaf black tea that I have and I'm going to brew it in there. Then I'm gonna throw my test swatch in. Okay, I'm going to add Swatch. Okay, so it's been an hour and a half. This is where we're at. I'm gonna rinse this out and see what it looks like. Okay, so here is the <clears throat> tea dyed one. I am not sold on this. I don't know if I would wanna wear that color. Um, Jason suggested that I try an indigo. Well, I don't have time to buy an indigo, so I will just use this royal blue that I have here. Okay, so basically these are my color choices so far. Although I'm not super confident that I could get it this dark because I only have this one bottle and I have a ton more fabric to dye than just this little swatch. Hey guys, it's the next day. And I could not decide what to do about dyeing. So I asked you guys on Instagram what color I should do. The majority of you guys said tea dyed. So that's what I'm going to do. And after looking at it again this morning, I feel like it does have kind of like a nice patina on it. Whereas the white is nice, but it does kind of have a lab coat feel, which one of you guys kindly pointed out to me. Um, and that also kind of helped me tip the scale in favor of the tea dye. So, gonna go for it. So I went downstairs in the garage to try to find a plastic container that was gonna be big enough to dye in. And then I had this great idea. So I'm gonna use this ice chest. So the great thing about this ice chest idea is that not only is it big enough to fit the entire jacket in, but I'm gonna close the lid so it'll also help insulate and keep the liquid as hot as possible while the jacket is sitting in there dying for like an hour and a half to three hours. So I'm pretty excited about this idea. Okay, so the only way I could figure out to do a high concentration of tea is just dumping the loose leaf tea in there. Now I'm gonna boil it and let it steep and get as dark as possible. And then I'm gonna strain it with a strainer before I stick it in the ice chest. Success, you guys, success. Sorry, I changed again because it's really hot here. Um, <laughs> I think I might have been using green tea, guys, because I have two jars here, and this one looks a little bit more like black tea, and I was using the other one. I think that was green tea. So on this next batch, I'm going to try to use the what I think is the black tea and see how it comes out. All right, my second batch looks bit darker so I'm gonna go ahead and add that to my first one then I'm gonna brew another batch and then we will be good to go all right yeah that is getting a lot darker I think it's a lot better all right so I just poured the last batch in there and then I'm just going to squeeze the excess out of this before I add more hot water here okay so one more time let me tell you what this concoction is so I took about a whole jar of loose leaf tea. I brewed three pots this size of the tea, splitting the tea between each pot. For each one, I brewed it. I think I boiled it for like five minutes with the tea in there, and then I let it sit 
for like 10 to 15 minutes just with the tea steeping. Then after that, I dumped it into the ice chest. And then to finish it off, I went ahead and filled three pots full of hot water and poured it into my mixture. So this is three pots of tea and three pots of hot water. And I'm going to go ahead and get my coat wet now. Okay, I am not even gonna lie. I am so nervous about this right now. But I trust your guys' opinion and you all voted for the tea dye. So that's what I'm gonna do. Also, I'm totally gonna blame you if it comes out terrible. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I don't think it's going to come out terrible. I think it's going to come out great, but there is something really fun about the white and the yellow on here that I really like. But I think it will give it like a nice vintage feel to do the tea dye. So I'm going to get this wet, put it in the bath. So I weighed it down with a pot full of water and then some stove lids that were heavy. So everything is soaking down underneath there and I'm gonna go ahead and watch the clock and I will check on it temporarily. Okay, moment of truth. <laughs> I think this could be a good be a good place to rinse it. It still has that pinky color in my opinion. Why don't you just let it soak overnight? I mean, it'll just make it darker and more I know, brown. Just all night? Because you can just wash it in the washing That'll machine. That'll be in there for like 16 hours. Oh, yeah. I don't know if I want to do that. I don't know. Yeah, I think I'm going to let it go all night. Nice. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so it's like 11 o'clock at night, and I've made the decision to pull the jacket out. I was going to let it go all night, but then I thought about it, and I was like... I would rather have the coat look this color than like an actual tan color because I don't really like how tan looks with my skin tone. So I think we're just gonna go for this light tone. And I'm gonna rinse it out right now and hang it to dry. DIY is turning into a dying saga. I think that there was some grease or something like, I don't know what, on one of the pots or the lids that I used to weigh the coat down. And it has now permanently stained the front of my coat. I'm like trying to get it out with Dawn dish soap and scrubbing and it's not working and I'm really sad. Okay, so I just drain it out and I'm going to hang it up to dry. The color is going to be much lighter than this. I think I'm happy with it, other than this tragedy right here. Um, but it looks like this panel will cover most of that, so praise God. At least it wasn't, you know, somewhere on the front where you could really see it. That was crazy. Okay, so I dried it in the sun today and it is completely finished. I really liked how it turned out and I'm glad that I dyed it. The color ended up being like this dusty rose color because it's kind of hard to tell but the fabric actually had kind of like a slight pinkish undertint in some of the fibers. And so when I dyed the tea on top of it, it ended up looking more like a dusty rose color. So it might look tan to you guys, but if you get closer, you can actually tell. I really like how it looks. I even like it with this outfit. I paired it with this gorgeous little dress that I got from The Lotion and they are a sustainable clothing company that I am in love with. When they gifted this dress to me, I opened it and I like literally thought, wow, this is the nicest dress I've ever owned. Like the quality and the craftsmanship and the fabric, it is just 
so good. Such high quality, you guys. Um, and then it even has pockets. And I just love their fabrics. It's just like this beautiful tie-dye. All these different colors in it. There's yellow, blue, there's pink. Um, it's just like this amazing sherbet goodness of a dress. Absolutely love it. I've been wearing it all the time. I paired it with these woven clogs from Everlane. Okay, and then I paired it with this jacket that I think goes so well. And I really like this outfit all together. The colors just pair really beautifully with it. So anyways, that's my final DIY. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Well, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this DIY quilted jacket video. I'm gonna link all of the supplies down below for you in the description box, including the exact pattern that I got. That way, if you want, you can go pick up a quilt at your local thrift store and make one yourself. Also, another thing is after I made this jacket, I found a company where you can send in your own quilt and they will make you an incredible jacket. The company is called Psychic Outlaw. If maybe you don't wanna do the DIY project, maybe you just wanna send off your quilt and have somebody else make it for you, you can do that too. It's pretty awesome. I absolutely adore the pattern that they use for their quilted jackets and every single one turns out so unique and amazing. I mean, obviously, because they're using unique vintage quilts for the jackets. So anyways, you've got to check them out. Check out their Instagram. I'm going to link them down below for you guys. And I guess that's all that I have to say. Um, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and please don't forget to subscribe. You guys, it helps me so much. I'm trying to get to 25K. If you could help me, that would be awesome. All right, you guys. Remember, you are beautiful just the way you are. Impromptu Zoom. Bye! Okay, so here is all of my dye right here. Can you sit down? Sit. Sit, Margo. Good girl! The main colors that I'm thinking of... The main colors that... Oh my god. And then my coat on top. <gasps> no! Margo! Did she rip it? No! No! Are you kidding me? Did she rip it? No. But she was trying to rip into it. Hey! Sit, please. Sit. I can't believe I didn't notice that she's doing that the whole time I was filming. Like, are you kidding me? Oh, that is crazy. I would have been, I would have given you away. <laughs> what a turd! What is it about this fabric that you're so attracted to? So thank you so much to Squarespace for sponsoring this video today. I had actually been wanting to start a tiny acorn blog for quite a while. They made it so easy for me to start a blog. I just picked out the template that I wanted. I picked all the colors and the fonts. I love how I could also switch it to the mobile view so I could see what it would look like for someone who's reading my blog on their smartphone. Honestly, Squarespace is just such a great tool to just empower you to be able to create whatever it is that you want to. Maybe you're finally ready to put yourself out there and start trying to get new clients and you want a beautiful online presence that kind of shows what you're all about. Whether you're a photographer, a model, you're you know a blogger, you're somebody who wants to start an e-commerce online store, there are so many different things that you can do on Squarespace. They basically have templates for all of that stuff. So head over to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com backslash tinyacorn to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain.